Hurry it up. Where do you want him? There. What did you say? I said he was dying. You said I killed him. So I did. You never learn. You must like that hell box. You just earned five days in there, both of you. The kid didn't say anything. Mr. Heiser, the governor's committee's here in the warden's office. Into the kitchen, both of you. Mouth of yours nearly wrecked everything. Your uh, first visit to a prison? Well, as a member of an investigating committee. Yes. You know nothing about prison work, and yet you're here on an investigating committee. Well, at the governor's request. Well, we have had our problems here, I admit that, but. Uh, Mr. Bannerman and Mr. Kirby here, they've served on other committees, and they know that there are no quick and easy answers. These men are sent here for punishment, Mr. Uh, Cartwright. They're thieves, highwaymen, murderers, harsh, cruel men. And when you're dealing with men like that, sometimes it takes harsh measures. I want you to keep that in mind. It's Mr. Heiser, my yard captain. When you're ready, gentlemen, You uh, won't like what you see. Too many prisoners, not enough room, and no money to do anything. Maybe we can do something about that. Uh, okay. The governor asked us specifically to recommend whatever changes we feel are necessary. Well, uh, I can give you two. More guards and better pay. Now, listen. You can talk to anybody, you can see anything you want, talk to any of the prisoners, but there's two rules. You stay close to me at all times, and you don't get within arm's length of any prisoner. It's more like caging animals than men. That's close. The big cell is like a lion pen, only these lions make their own claws. I'll show you in a minute. We run bed and body checks two or three times a week. We try to surprise them, but somehow they always know when we're coming. Hmm. Save this for you. Found it this morning. But for every one we find, there's a dozen or two we don't. So I had a moment. A little weight won't hurt him. We won't be here long. We just want to see how the place is run. I'd like to see what they and get to eat. Man from the governor's office. Do what he wants, you get a raise in your salary. <laughs> Feed him. Thank you. Nice fresh vegetables. Stew. My name for it. I've eaten the food several times. Not fancy, but good. You try, Mr. Cartwright? Just taste a bit. My name's Cooper. You don't know me. But I've seen you in Virginia City a couple of times. Hmm. You're a very good cook? I ought to be. Out of practice. Six years gone and 19 to go. Oh, yeah, sure. Recognize a few faces here, like uh, Johnny Plank. Idaho and Burt Noon. Let me have a sample of that stew, too. 
I'm sure nothing wrong with this stew. Waste, probably. Happens in every kitchen. Garbage. Would have been burned and thrown out, but the inspection got in the way. Who buys the food here? You'll have to ask the warden. We'll do that. Now, if you'd like to see the rest of the place, uh, gentlemen. about those stripes, they're not our work. He had them when he got here. All right. Oh, Mr. Heiser. Yes. What's this? So. The hell box, it's us. 48 hours in there and they bury you. They're loud mouth. We got a lot of them in here. Doors open, take a look. Charlie. Ben said the prison was built around him. It's his home now. He doesn't want to leave. Charlie. Yeah, Ch Charlie. <laughs> All right, keep your distance. Keep moving. Right. Not enough guards. That's why we have to move the work gangs in and out one at a time. This way, gentlemen. They're here. Let's we go. No bunch enough. Move. Cooper says go. Get ready. Doctor will be here tomorrow. Who needs attention now? This is a prison. The doctor comes twice a week. From what they tell me, that's all they can afford. We'll change that. We certainly shall. We've tried, Ben, two or three times. All right, chain up.
this whole week to get a better deal? You keep your hands off of him, you hear? He's the one that put me in here. Don't you try to settle an old grudge with him. Get high, sir, and those other screws and put them in that hell box. And then? Them? They gonna help us get what we want. And what if they don't? And they're yours. Time for a beer. How's your trip? Long ride. I had to chase Barton all the way up in the high country to give him that money. Yeah, Pa's going to meet us for supper over at the hotel. He'll be earlier if the inspection doesn't take all day. It'll take me about an hour to get cleaned up. We got time for another beer, huh? Mm-hmm. Two? Two? Two sounds good. Two more beers! I'm sorry, we're close enough. That's the prison bell. There's trouble out there. How do you like my new outfit? Get yourself a new tailor. <laughs> It'll be all right. It's gonna be. Ah. You like this? <laughs> right. What are you doing? Get out of that. What? Let's have a quiet. I said quiet. Do you blacksmithing by your bed? What are doing here? I'm gonna need quiet. Now get out of here. Come on, get out. Let's move out of here. Hey, keep the noise down. I'll start busting heads. Jonesy, cut your hands off. You and Clint. Can't do. Hey, Texas, you seen about a move out that you yell, all right? Empty as a drum. Tell me when horses, guns, and a head start. A stupid plank. You think you're gonna turn all those men loose? Who cares about them? I'm talking about us, just us. Well, what about them? Who cares? Well, I do, and they do. That's what this is all about. Gonna make your own deal, huh? Freedom, horses, guns for you and your friends, huh? What about us? Roscoe, Scoggins, take a table and a couple of chairs and put them out there. I want every con in this place to hear every word that's being said. What about them? Cartwright stays with me. We don't need the other two. <laughs> Years. You're the only man up bother looking at the corners. So we're gonna tell you what we want. Well, I'm a member of the inspection commission, but <laughs> you sure can't speak for the governor. You can sign our demands. That is, if you think they're fair. Just so you'll know, I planned all this. I got me and the rest of them off the chains, out of the stocks. Quite right. All of us are carrying a load of years on our backs. Hard labor, chains, slop of food. And living thing outside these walls that ain't being treated better than we are. Most of us can't even hope to live long enough to serve our sentences and walk out of here free.
he expected me. Just no lies. We played straight on both sides. Or a lot of folks might just get killed. The convicts control cell block two. Your father, Mr. Vanderman, Mr. Kirby are in there with them, along with three guards and my yard captain. Go ahead, Mr. Keller. Well, the convicts are loose in here in the main cell, in the kitchen, and in the guard room. Now, this door, three-inch plank, is the cork in the bottle. There's sliding iron bars that lock on both sides, and both sides are locked. There's no way they can get out. No way we can get in. Where's Griff? Where's that, Griff? Hey, Griff! Here he is. Where are you back, Griff? Donovan, I was trying to get him to eat some Here, that's some air from change. Donovan, six days in that hell box. He was sick and no doctor. Well, I already told you, I, I intend to tell the governor there should be a doctor here all the time. Well, don't you hurry, not for Donovan. He ain't hurting now. Huh? He's dead. Oh, yeah. No, no. Dead? I had a year to go. You make it. Griff, sit down. I'm do some writing. To the governor. Demands from the prisoners in cell box number two. Wait a minute. Donovan was in that hot box for six days. Why? Why? Because he couldn't swing a sledge. Heisel said he was dogging it. You put a strong man in there for four days, and they get so weak they had to carry him out. Right. Whoa. Donovan was sick when they put him in there. Right. No more hell box. No more whipping. Get, get up. Get, get up. Nice. Now, what about our mail? Yeah. Yeah. We want our letters. And we want permission to write at least one letter a month. Don't you get your mail here? <gasps> yeah. <laughs> it comes here. Yeah, but we don't see it. All right, we want some, some soap yeah. and a place to wash our clothes. Yeah. And we want blankets that don't stink to high heaven. Yeah. 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 And write down food. We want the grub that the state pays for that we never get. You saying someone is stealing the ration money? I'm not going to say it. But I'll prove it. And maybe with that open your eyes. Goggins, you figure it Get mine a minute. King of the whole world inside these walls. Well, how you like it now, Heiser? Huh? Huh? How you like it now, huh? Thirty-five cents a day per man for food. And what do we get? A dog couldn't eat. Well, the, the stew I tasted was pretty good. Yeah, so it was. Inspection day stew. How many times we get it? Four times in six years. You saw the rotten potatoes? The weevils in the flour? Yeah, I do. Tell him who buys the food. Ask the warden. We don't have to. We know already. But you're going to tell Cordray. Right? Tell you nothing. You want to kill me and hang for it, go ahead. I, uh, I won't kill you. But I might just turn you over to the cons, the one that you worked over the whip. Yeah. yeah. Give me that yeah. cake. Good choice. Let's get it. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I buy the food. Who you buy it from? Vanneman. Vanneman. Dirty. Get Vanneman. How thick are these walls right there? Two feet, a little better. Well, we could break through there. A crew of men with drills and sledges, rifles to cover, wouldn't take long. Just twice as long as it would take to kill the hostages. What if the prisoners broke through the wall here? 
they break through the wall into the yard, they'll be looking at this Gatling gun here and rifles in the back towers. It'll be a turkey shooting, they know it. The governor's in Virginia City. He's on his way here. I shall buy food from you. Well, I, I, I've done a little business with the prison, but, but not all of it. Not anywhere near all. All of it! Stop it! Stop it! Killing him ain't gonna fill your bellies. Maybe that's why Mr. Vanderman always made sure he came on his inspection to us. That's the door. Hey, Cooper! Yeah? There's somebody out here. Yeah. Two back in the hell box. And get back to your places. And keep it quiet. And you too. Three inches thick. Sliding bars, solid iron, same kind of lock on the other side. Hey! Who's out there? Cooper. Calhoun! What do you want? Calhoun? Got an arrow for you. Our demands. Deliver for the governor. Might take a while. He was in Virginia City. He's on his way here. You'd better hurry. We don't do anything till we find out the hostages are alive. They're alive. Don't tell us, show us. Are you all right? I'm fine. Everybody's all right. You just do as they say. It's like cotton. So is mine. Thank you. I think you're beginning to see what I meant. What are they doing to us here? Now, one out of five will live long enough to serve a sentence. what we got. But Griff, he's different. What do you think another four years in this place is going to do to him? Hey, Griff. Tell the man why you're here. Hammered a man with a pick handle. <laughs> Did you kill him? I might have, but I got stopped. My stepdad, he liked to beat on people. He beat on me till I got tired of it. So to give you a gold medal. It was my legal father that put the law on his side. He put me in here. You want some more water? No, no, I'm fine, thank you. Yeah, I could use some in a dipper. We got hostages, we got the key to the gate, we got it all. And you're selling us out for the promise of grub we'll never get. Get out of my way. <laughs> Plain, you stupid. <laughs> All right. 
Who's next? Mail. Letters. Blankets. We want the grub that the state pays for that we never get? Lies! Accusations made by murderers. Not one word of truth. It can't be all lies. My father signed these demands. What they're asking for is reasonable. Food, blankets, soap, mail. Those men are prisoners. Here to be punished, not to be pampered. They get what they need. How long since you've been out there to look, Warden? Well... Answer him! Well, this administrator, my, my, my place is right here. Nothing they're asking for they shouldn't have had all along. Then I go with Calhoun. Give them what they want. You tell them now. You tell them now. I want my father out of there. All right. All right. Subject to the governor's approval. The hell with the governor. He's not here. You tell him now. You, you tell him, Calhoun. Who's out there? Calhoun. He's got somebody with him. Calhoun. Who's the other one? Joe Cartwright. Come to help you, Paul, huh? Forget it. We want the warden. He's busy. He sent me. Shake it in the shoes. That's why I sent you. The reason we're here is the demands. You're going to get what you want. Cooper's demands. Forget them. New demands. Horses, guns, grub. You tell the warden, shake it or not, he's got to talk to me. Where's Cooper? <laughs> Forget him, too. Fifteen minutes. He better be standing where you're standing or we start killing hostages. I'll tell him. You do that. Cooper never even seen that knife. Cooper didn't count. It was just a con. But if anything happens to one of those hostages, we'll all hang. That, that don't seem right. It's the law. I'll see what I can find out. Plank's running it now. Plank? Johnny Plank. He's in here for robbery, but he's a killer. Three states waiting for him with ropes. Him and that noon in Idaho. Would Cooper let him just take over like that? As long as he had a breath left. Then Cooper must be dead. They got a killing against him now. They got nothing to lose. He wants to talk to you. He wants to kill me. That's what he wants to do. They got knives in there. They got men that can throw them. He says 15 minutes. You're there or he starts killing hostages. Do your heart good to look in that hot box. Everybody in there locked up tight. Sweat and blood. According to Mr. Cartwright's fine gold watch, the warden's got eight minutes to come front and center. Anybody out there yet? Whew. Well, it's on the back of the stove. Thought maybe you could use some. Kid, Cooper's friend. You wouldn't have any ideas about trying to get even, would you? Cooper's dead. He ain't the first friend I lost in here. 
smart man's got to take care of himself. I just want to stay alive. And I want to get out of these walls. If you're lucky, you might make it. Pour the coffee. I got an extra cup. Is it all right if I give him some? <laughs> A hustler. Covers every bit. Go on, pour. I give him some muscle. He'll be needing it before long. Blast that main door with dynamite. If the blast doesn't kill the hostages, the convicts will. If they were in the hell box here and the door was padlocked, the blast couldn't reach them, neither could the cons. We need somebody on the inside to make sure they get in there. Yeah. There's just six minutes left. Hey, wait a minute. Look, Plank said he was going to use one of the hostages as a shield. And why couldn't the warden use a prisoner as a shield? Meaning you, huh? Well, it won't work. They saw you in there. You wouldn't live a minute. They didn't see me. Now, that might work. Not in those clothes. Well, they gave me some other clothes. Okay, there's something else we need. We need some kind of a diversion to get the prisoners away from the guard room. How about a riot in cell block one? Uh, they'd hear the noise. How do we manage that? I think I know how. Let's go. Just a minute. Prison clothes are not going to do it. The men in there don't trust anybody or believe in anything. You know, there's one thing I can do that might give you a chance, but you sure won't enjoy it. What is it? Heiser's favorite persuader. Whatever. Move, man. We're running out of time. No, what do you say? Nothing. Nobody. According to fine gold, watch its time. One minute past. Maybe the warden's shaking too much to come save your hide. Okay, let's go through it one more time. You can hear a racket in cell block one. A little while later, there'll be two shots. You start counting from there. 30 seconds later, I'm gonna blow that door. I'll be counting. Good luck. Let's go, warden. You gotta come with him. Come right on your feet. When you try anything and you're dead. No game, no rules. I'm giving you back all but six cons. Me and a five I take with me. We want 12 horses. Six for the hostages, you hear? I hear. Bring the horses in the back gate between the cell blocks. Six rifles, six handguns, and the guns better be loaded. Guns loaded. Yeah. Blankets, grub, ammo. No guards on the walls or in the towers. You got that? No guards. You got two hours. Two hours? I can't two get hours. to... Two hours! Get moving. What are you doing? What do you want? Please, 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 don't, don't stick me with that thing. Please, come on. They, they, they put me out of, out of cell block one to, to be a, a target in, in front of the warden, you know. In case you threw a knife or something, see? Keep talking. I want to get out of here. You guys are going out. Take me with you. You're Johnny Plank, ain't you? I'd be proud to ride with Johnny Plank. <laughs> what do you say? You're probably a plant. You don't look like a car to me. <laughs> or smell like one. I don't. Uh... Look at this. Still could be a plant. Your name Candy? Candy? Yeah, yeah, that's right. You know him, kid? Yeah. Up in Billings, Montana. And, uh, cell block one, he was there when I come in.
marked him good. How's the straps? His dirt and his cuts and blood poison have been unwashed out. Something wrong with your head, kid? You want to take care of everybody? He helped me once. Keep your eye on him. And the door. Clank. All right, if I get some uh, water out of the bucket. One dipper, no more. Johnny, hey, you're going out of here. Take me with you. Why should I? I'm risking my neck to warn you. Cooper's friends, Clint and Andy, and a whole bunch of others are out there waiting just to kill you. You and Cooper, closer than fingers on a mitten. I'm looking at 18 years. I want out of here. What do you say? All right, deal. Four of us now. Need two more. Last time I saw you was just outside of Billings. Trying to wrestle a cow out of a snowdrift. It was a long time ago. What are you doing in here? Two to five. What are you doing here? I'm going to try to help these hostages escape. I need your help. I saved your neck. That's all you're going to get for me. Look, when I make my play, they're going to know I'm a plant. And they're going to know you're a liar. And I'm as good as dead. Okay, if you can't help me, just keep your mouth shut. All right? This is going to hurt. <clears throat> yeah. How fast a fuse is this? Foot and 30 seconds. I make it 15 seconds. Hour and five minutes gone. 55 minutes left. I'll be ready in just a minute. How long before you start the riot? 10 minutes, maybe 15. Make it 10. Here. I thought my shirt was 
try to be helpful. I don't need you. Well, you back. Tell from the likes of you to put me here in the first place. Oh. Oh. Pity that it takes something like this to get the public's attention. Governor, the warden says everything's back to normal. I don't want it back to normal. If normal means that those men in there have to be treated like animals. Mr. Cartwright has been filling me in. Well, maybe we can make some of those much-needed changes now. Yes, and the first one's going to be to get a new warden. Yes, sir. I'll get back to work. Ben, I can't thank you enough. Yes, you can, Jim. You've already taken the first step by getting rid of the warden. Now, what about the prisoners' demands? Work. They need it, Jim. Work. In the fields, maybe. A check on graft. And you sure could use humane guards around here. You could get them if you paid them a decent wage. If the legislators could spend two days in here... I know, Ben. My problem is to convince the public to care about men they'd rather forget. Governor, how we got the horses all set? Good. Candy, what the doctor say about your back? Oh, uh, it's gonna be all right. He said a couple of weeks off. I'll be good as new. A couple of weeks off? Well, Jim, what about, uh, what about Griff King? I don't know, Ben. What about him? Well, if he's put back into that cell, he's as good as dead. Well, I could parole him, but then I'd have to find someone who'd assume the responsibility. That shouldn't be too difficult. No, as a matter of fact, I already have someone in mind. Good. You. Well, don't worry about a thing. We, we can find another horse. Hmm? Come on. It's all yours, Mr. Cartwright. Thank you. Want a grip? There you are. Not up. Thank you. He'll be back. They always come back.
all yours, Mr. Cartwright. Thank you. Want a grip? There you are. Not up. Thank you. They'll be back. They always come back. How's it feel to be back on a horse again? I'll never forget that little pony you were on the first time I saw you. <laughs> that had to be the worst spavin, spinny leg little old hammerhead mustang I ever saw in my life. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you didn't look much better yourself. You remember you were wearing suspenders because you didn't have enough weight around your rear end to keep your pants up? How old were you? 16, 17? 15. And always laughing. No matter how bad things got, you always saw the funny side of it. Because I was a kid, and kids laugh a lot. But when you grow up, you realize that there ain't nothing to laugh about. And you grow up fast in prison. But you're something you wouldn't know anything about. Oh, wouldn't I? Hey, Griff. You'll be in Whipstock in about an hour. Get you some fresh clothes. Something that'll fit. Grip. Try these on. What size boots, sir? Eleven. Yeah. Anything we missed? There's no gun. You can't have a gun. You're on parole. Where do I change? Room right back here, sir. Yeah, there is something else. I forgot to have my prison number painted on the back of the shirt. You. I missed you. Oh, you haven't changed a bit, have you? Really? <laughs> How'd the trip go? Oh, uh, uh, interesting, interesting. How'd the work go? Oh, smooth as bacon grease. I did everything you told me to. Everything? Well, almost everything. <laughs> uh, this is Griff King. He's going to be working with us. This is my son, Jamie. How are you doing, Griff? Jamie. Um, I'm... Hmm. Is this, uh... The homework you've been doing? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I guess you could call it a lesson in uh, modern history. Mm -mm. No? Mm -mm. Well, I better get started on my homework. <laughs> yes, I think you'd better. <laughs> oh, nice meeting you, Griff.
This is the classiest prison I've ever been in. <clears throat> Look, Griff. This is a working ranch. In my home. For you, it's an opportunity. A chance. A new start. Whatever you want to make it. I just want to leave. Why? Because according to the terms of my parole, that's the one thing that I can't do. And when somebody tells me I can't do something, that's the one thing I want to do. Well, I certainly think you ought to do whatever you want to do. You want to stay, stay. If you want to leave, get on that horseman right out. And if they caught me, they'd put me back in that prison for 20 years. Yeah, that's right. You want to make up your mind? If you want to put your name in the paper? I stay. Mm -hmm. Let's hear no more talk about prisons. Greg, what do you think of the place? It's all right. Uh, I talked to Luke. He has six he wants to try to break tomorrow. Oh, good. Oh, Candy, will you show Griff where to bed down? Yeah, sure. Come on, we'll find a place for you in the bunkhouse. How much do these clothes cost? Eight dollars and sixty-three cents. Take it out of my first month's pay. I've already put it in the book. You two are really hitting it off, huh? Well, at least he says what's on his mind. Whether you like it or not. If you sure know how to make things tough for yourself. Yeah. What's the matter with you, anyway? Think Kurt right when we out on a limb to do you a favor and you act like he's... Well, did I ask him to? People like him, you don't have to ask. A favor is something you ask for. No, not always. If my motto is if you need a helping hand, you're going to find it right at the end of your own wrist. No. A man has got to shape his own life, Candy. And every time I turn around, somebody else is telling me where I'm going to go and what I'm going to be. If they'd given you the choice, you would have turned down the parole. Is that it? I didn't say that, but nobody asked me. All right, okay, okay. You, you wanted a chance to say yes. That's it. You want to make up your own mind about where you go and what you do. That's it. Well, Griff, if you make up your mind to stay here, you're going to behave yourself. And you're going to work. Because if you don't, if you cause any trouble for Ben Cartwright, it's not going to be just the law that's looking for you. I thought you were going to show me where to bed down. I am. Come on. Over here, Griff. See you in the morning. How you doing? How you doing? Well, it ain't much, but it's home. <laughs> I'm Shorty. Can I give you a hand? I think I can handle it. Griff, what's that stand for? Griff? How do you spell that? Just like it sounds. Uh, this is Tulsa and Lucas. It don't sound like any name I ever heard. Uh, what do they call you, boy? Well, they call me the Duke of Edinburgh, but since we're all such good friends, you can just call me Sire. What's this, son? To go to meeting? Now, you just keep your hands off of my things, huh? Where do they throw the trash? They got some boxes out behind the main house. You know, Lucas, uh, he just don't strike me as being friendly. You notice that? Probably got no sense of humor, either. Well, we'll find out about that soon enough. <laughs> <laughs>
did it. Who's the funny man who cut the ropes on the bunk? I asked a question. What are you doing? All right, I did it. Come on, Luke, take it. You are. What are you doing? They cut the ropes on my bunk. They do that to every new man that comes they in don't here. It's, to a, me, no. it's a joke. Griff, it's no a joke. joke where I come from. Everything is a matter of life and death. If you're someplace else now. This is not a prison. I'm not a guard. These men are not your enemies. They was laughing at me. No, they were laughing at the joke. Griff, if I'd have been here, I'd have been laughing. I remember the time you'd have been laughing. You remember? All right? Yeah, I'm all right. I'm all right. All right, fellas, come on back in here. All right, it takes two to fight, Lucas. He's the one that started it. I don't care who started it. It's late, we got a big day tomorrow. With the lights out and everybody in bed in five minutes. Lucas. It was my fault. Lucas, I'm sorry. Ready for lights out? Just wait a minute. I want to put these uh, ropes back. It's here. your last chance, boy. Well, wait a minute. Going? Wait a minute. Going? Gone. Go. Go. Salt Creek make a rough tally of the herd of it, all right? Got you. Uh, Hal, Andy, start moving a remote up that little canyon to the creek. Right, Candy. Also, Shorty, you're going to be working the three-finger canyon. Start moving the strays down toward the main herd. Oh, no. Yeah, it's so hot up there, Candy. It's going to be hot where I am, too, honey. Oh, Lucas, uh, you're not to saddle up your horse. You're going to be working <coughs> with me and Joe today. Griff. What do you want me to do? I'll check with the boss, see where he wants you to work. Ben, anything particular you want Griff to do today? Uh, yeah, yeah. There's a bunch of logs back at the house. Chop them up, stack them in cords. You'll find an axe and a saw in the tool house. Uh, wait a minute. That, that's chores, Mr. Cartwright. I put in my time doing chores. I can ride, I can handle a rope. I worked as a top hand on a ranch once. 
Well, then you ought to know that the new man gets the dirty jobs, and you're the new man. Look, my being here is your idea. The warden's. All I'm asking for is a chance to prove I can do the job. Can you chop wood? I can chop wood. Fine. Let's see if you can do that job. But I don't like it. Neither does anybody else. But it has to be done. Uh, yeah, I just wondered, maybe, maybe Griff could uh, give Candy and I a hand today. Uh, then if it doesn't work out, he can always chop the wood tomorrow. Yeah, that might be a dynamite idea. Dynamite's exactly the word I had in mind, dynamite. these horses who's the boss boy you know the master you can't let them know that they're tougher than you are i'll show you what i mean get him going for a minute there what's the name of that ugly beast alice Alice, I can't wait to get the dynamite. Joe. Good ride. Oh. Well, Griff, you ready to ride that next horse? this new man you've got working out here, King, Griff King. What about him? Suppose you tell me. Glenn, let's not play cat and mouse. You got something on your mind, you just say it. All right. Man gets out of prison, moves near Virginia City. First thing the store gets robbed. What's that got to do with him? Hey, just a minute, man. Whoever robbed that store took a pistol, rifle, cartridges for each. Blanket, uh, slicker, canned food. Well, it sounds like somebody's putting together a traveling kit. That's what it sounds like to me. Yeah. How'd you hear about it, Griff? I got a letter from the prison 
They felt it was important that the proper authorities be notified. Why didn't you tell me you had an ex-convict working out here, Ben? We got here a couple of days ago. Paroled in my care. I didn't think there was any rush about it. I see. Well, maybe you don't know these people as well as I do. I want to talk to them. Okay, I'll go with you. You stay right out here. I'll bring them out. If you don't mind. Some people call me Griff, and others call me Mr. King. And those are the only two names that I answer to. Mr. King. We had a store robbed in Virginia City last night. Do you know anything about it? Yeah, I know the store was robbed. How'd you know that? Because you just told me. And I don't think lawmen lie, do they? Where were you last night? Did you sleep in his bunk? No. Nope. Slept out in the woods. Any witnesses? Come on, boy, you come with me. Oh, wait, wait, easy, easy. easy. Mm. You went to jail as long as Mr. King has been in jail. You'd probably want to sleep in the woods, too, wouldn't you? He's got no witnesses, Ben. Do you? As far as the law is concerned, he's presumed to be innocent until you can prove him guilty. Isn't that right? Where's your gear? I'm wearing it. Where's your bunk? It's the last one on the right as you go in the door. You can't miss it. It's the one on the floor. No, you're wrong. I didn't tell him about you. You got a letter from the warden. What do I have to do? Live my whole life in the middle of a crowd so the next time somebody's robbed, I got a witness? Nobody said it was going to be easy. What do you have to do to get people to trust you? Well, maybe you can start by trusting them. Find something, Clem? Yep, an alibi. Tell him. Well, uh, I had a little excitement in the bunkhouse last night, and uh, I couldn't get to sleep, so uh, I went for a walk, and I saw a Griff there out sleeping under a tree. What time was that? I didn't look at a watch, but it was sometime between one and two. Tulsa saw me leave the bunkhouse. He could tell you what time it was. That's about the time the store was robbed. What? Well, well, thank you, Lucas. Yes, thanks. Satisfied? I gotta go find me a burglar. How long have you known Lucas? Well, ever since he started working here, why? I, I just wondered. Tell the truth. Yeah, well, I just want you to know I appreciate it. Well, why don't you just go appreciate it someplace else? What you reading, Tulsa? Book. Uh, 
lost again. Zach, can I play the winner in this game? I got the winner. How about the winner of this game? Tulsa got the winner of that game. Ain't that right, Tulsa? That's right. What about the winner of that game, all right? I just want to tell you how much I've enjoyed this evening. What a pleasure it is being here and how I'm warmed by your friendship. Jenna, before I can have a book in your mouth. Yeah. To show you my appreciation, I am going to shut up. Thank you for your kind attention. That ladder go fixed yet? I'll get it. You want me to fix it for you? Go ahead. Saddlemaker once. Hey, Griff. Uh, there's not a bad bunch of guys in here. Just don't try so hard. Give them time. They'll let you off the hook. They'll even let you breathe, maybe. Uh, fellas, I, uh, I need a volunteer. Right up to the line shack at Seminole Canyon. Take up some supplies and get the shack ready for winter. Hmm? Well, I'll do it. I wasn't going into town today anyway. Oh, well, I appreciate that very much, Griff, but uh, I don't think you know this country well enough yet to... Well, you can just tell me how to get there. Not quite as simple as that, but thank you anyway. I'll go, Miss Cartwright. Thank you, Lucas. I guess I owe you another day off, huh? All right, fellas. The rest of the day is your own. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> Find the supplies in the cookhouse. Thank you again, Lucas. Yeah. Would you like?
like to go into town? I don't think so. I'll give you an advance on your pay. I already owe you $8.63. I trust you. Not enough to let me go riding off to Seminole Canyon by myself. Thank you, Jim. Go ahead, Jim. Not a bad checker player. It's just that I'm so much better. Because I really had a lot of time to polish my game. How far is it to Seminole Canyon? Oh, 10, 12 miles up the north of trail. You probably won't get there till after dark. Yeah. I was supposed to go into town tonight, but I guess I won't make it. Anything important? Ah, no. Just a package for me at Wells Fargo. I was supposed to pick it up on my day off. I might be going into town tonight. Just take a look around. Oh, uh, hey, Griff. You need a couple of dollars to pay, Dave? No, I'm sorry. Oh, no, come on. Oh, Dave. Okay. You want me to pick up that package for you? Yeah, I appreciate it. Ah, the Wells Fargo off and close at round eight. Why don't you come inside? I, uh, I gotta run an errand. Well, then hurry back. Five minutes? And you won't go away? Uh, what's your name? Amy. I'm Grip.
and we're going to get a few things straightened out. Turn around. Turn around. All right. Now, I didn't rob no Wells Fargo office. I went in. Somebody hit me from behind. There was a shot. The lights went out, and somebody ran out the back door. By the time I got to my feet and out the front door, you were running at me with a pistol in your hand. You just happened to come along when somebody was robbing it, huh? No, I didn't just happen to wander in. Somebody sent me there to pick up a package that probably doesn't exist. Who? The same man who lied when he said he saw me sleeping under the tree the night that store was robbed. Why didn't you tell us then that he was lying? Because he would have put me in jail. Why would Lucas lie to give you an alibi? Not to give me an alibi, to give him an alibi. And don't you see, if he said he saw me sleeping under that tree, that means he had to be there too, about the same time the store was being robbed. But Lucas didn't need an alibi. All he had to do was let me throw you in jail. Oh, he didn't want me in jail. Not then. He wanted whatever's missing from that Wells Fargo office. $50,000 paper money. Easy to carry, easy to hide. And somebody just like me to take the blame. You better have a talk with Lucas. He's up in Seminole Canyon. No, he's not. I went and got him last night. He's right in here. I'm glad to see you. I thought he was going to kill me. Why'd you lie to me, Lucas? Oh, you, uh, you mean about seeing him that night? That's what I mean. Well, he was one of the guys in the bunkhouse. I just didn't want to see him get in any trouble. Now, I didn't think he'd do anything like that. Well, I, I know I shouldn't have done it, but... Griff says he asked you to pick up a package for him at Wells Fargo. Is that true? Yeah. It's been there over a week. I was going to pick it up on my day off. You can check that out. Ask him. Well, Griff? Well, what? What do you want me to do? Say I did it? I didn't do it! Then I'll give you all the help you need in proving it. I'll get you the best lawyer in Virginia City. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to save you a lot of money. I'm going to get on a horse and ride right out of here. You do that, Griff. And you'll keep on riding for the rest of your life. If I don't do that, he's going to put me in prison for the rest of my life. You'd better believe that, boy. Now, you see what I mean? Now, get into that cell. Set up. You get the money, and I get hung. It was very slick. Why don't you just take your two dollars back? I ain't gonna be your own payday.
enough, Candy. Now turn that horse around and get on out of here. You ain't gonna use that gun anymore, and I'm gonna use this. Candy, come on. What did you do to Ben Cartwright? Nothing. And I didn't rob that Wells Fargo office. Then why are you running away, Griff? Because nobody listens to an ex-con. I listen to you. Ben Cartwright will listen to you. They'll all listen to you if you go back there and talk. Yeah, is that what you're taking me back there for? To talk? More talk? I'm not taking you anyplace. You go anywhere you like. Listen to me! Here, take this and go to Mexico. Go to China. Go to hell. I know this could have waited till morning, but I haven't slept very well just thinking about it. Came in and I wanted you to see it as soon as possible, Ben. Lucas, too. I know. Don't say a word. I, I've already said it all to myself. Now, well, I'd be happy to know we got the man. New pistol, new rifle. He can get himself a new horse. That stuff that was stolen from the store. Two saddlebags full of money, fifty thousand dollars worth. I told you, I told you, I didn't do it. That's right, you told us. You told us all along it was Lucas. Damn well, it wasn't me. Uh, <clears throat> Griff, uh, why don't you get yourself some good rest? Because hmm? tomorrow, you're going to be working all day, chopping wood. Well, you got yourself a deal. <laughs> Wages, you did it. You get any more bets like that, you let me know. Yeah, well, he had, but it was weak wages. It's all right, I'll win it back for you, playing check it. Oh, you couldn't win with a winning stick. What was in that package? Oh, my mom over in Tucson sent me a birthday cake. Well, when was your birthday? Oh, about six weeks ago. Don't you think it's kind of stale? Well, it's a thought that counts, ain't it? <laughs> 